As people live longer and remain active as they age, doctors are looking to technology to address common injuries to body parts that help people stay mobile, like the meniscus. The meniscus is a shock-absorbing cartilage pad in the knee. While meniscus injuries are common among professional athletes, the cartilage can be torn in the course of everyday actions like going upstairs or standing up. It is also prone to wearing down, which makes it likely for arthritis to develop in the knee. Doctors perform nearly one million procedures a year in the U.S. to treat the meniscus, so researchers are eager to develop a meniscus replacement that can stand the test of time. One option currently being tested is the new surface implant, the first synthetic meniscus to progress to human trials. According to its manufacturer, Memphis-based Active Implants, it's been used in about 150 patients in Europe and Israel. And Drake Ross, a 54-year-old from Columbus, Ohio, became the first American to have the synthetic meniscus implanted in his knee in January of 2015 by surgeons at Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center. Elsewhere, a team at Cornell and Columbia Universities in New York State is testing a 3D printed device that could help regenerate the meniscus rather than replace it. The idea of this approach is to use biologically compatible materials, we'll call them biomaterials. You know, they truly serve as a scaffold to get the cells to come in. The process starts with magnetic resonance imaging of the knee and the meniscus. What we have done is to use those uh, MRI images, uh, so these are two-dimensional slices. With multiple slices, we could readily reconstruct these into a 3D uh, design. This 3D printed scaffold is being tested in sheep before researchers apply to the Food and Drug Administration to proceed with the trial in humans. The human meniscus is actually by and large the same shape, it's just, you know, proportionally bigger. Dr. Mao and his colleagues hope this approach will be more successful than other treatments because they've infused human growth protein into the scaffolding. The cells in the meniscus are truly very specialized cells. So it took us a while, quite a while, to figure out that these two uh, proteins, when they were used in sequence, can stimulate the stem cells to become the cells in the meniscus. Once implanted, the scaffolding coaxes regrowth of the meniscus as the scaffolding itself slowly degrades. In sheep, that takes about four weeks. Tests on the sheep three months after surgery found that the growth factor infused scaffoldings that developed had structural and mechanical properties similar to a natural meniscus. What we have learned so far is the uh, regeneration of the tissues was truly more than we expected. Dr. Mao says it's likely multiple new approaches to restore damaged knee joints will be developed in the next few years. But he and his team are excited by the possibilities that 3D printing offers. One of the advantages of, of 3D printing is you, you can pro produce something that's exactly the same size and dimensions uh, for that specific patient. Go with a 3D printed biomaterial scaffold, uh, there's really unlimited supply.